bringing on our next guest. We have Aaron, who is the president from of From the Ground Up. Um, here he is coming on. We're, uh, How's it we're, going? Good. How are you? Good, good. We're going to be uh, continuing to focus on this sneaky vegetables theme. Sure. Okay, so for those who aren't as familiar because the brand is relatively new. Just, brand new. Yeah. Launching so. uh, this week for the first time. It's so exciting. Just uh, give our listeners a little heads up about what the brand is and how you guys came to be. Sure. So From the Ground Up was created because we saw a need in the market to offer vegetable-based snacking options to moms and dads with young kids where you've had all these options either in the cracker category and the salty snack category that didn't provide any nutrient value uh, for those consumers and for those kids. So now we're from the ground up. You could have a vegetable-based cracker, a vegetable-based pretzel, knowing that you're getting the nutrients, knowing you're getting the non-GMO, the gluten-free, the plant-based, and feeling comfortable with the quality and the taste that you're getting. Now, I mean, we've seen, a t and I've been writing, a ton of stories about cauliflower as yes. an ingredient with... Um, uh, pizza crust and rice and different things like that, but crackers is a new one. So, can you talk a little bit about just uh, what were some of the challenges you faced in terms of getting the product actually in hand? Absolutely. I, I think with cauliflower, we saw all the same trends that you saw, right? Mm -hmm. uh, pizza was selling an unbelievable amount, whether it was in Trader Joe's or stores around the country. Mm -hmm. And what we realized was if we could take cauliflower and stick it into a cracker and a pretzel and make it look like the same cracker or pretzel that a customer's been eating for years, mm -hmm. then we felt we would have a lot of success in bringing those customers over to try the product. Uh, so it took a long time. It took a lot of time to get cauliflower into the product, to figure out how to make it work, to make it work with other vegetables. We use vegetables like cassava, right? So all of that took a lot of time. I feel like we're at a very good place now where we have a product that really will resonate with consumers. Absolutely. And one quick note, just make sure you keep your mic super close to your mouth so that way everyone else can hear because sure. that was an amazing answer. <laughs> and that cauliflower, like I said, is such a hot ingredient right now, but it does have some of those logistical challenges in terms of how do you make it into a product. Um, uh, and people understand its versatility, like I said, through those additional things like pizzas or rices. How has the marketing of those brands and the rise of those brands helped you in terms of marketing and education as you come forward with a new innovative product? Absolutely. I think the most important thing is staying true to the look and the feel and the taste and the quality that consumers have been used to over the last 30 to 50 years eating a cheese it product, eating a Schneider's pretzel stick, right? Cauliflower pizza and cauliflower pizza crust it looks, feels, tastes like the regular pizza. So if we're able to come up with a product like we have that looks, tastes, and feels like that cheese it cracker, like mm -hmm. that Schneider's pretzel stick, then that will allow us to really get the consumer switching over to try our products for the first time. And knowing that the taste profile is there and all the nutrient benefits are there, we feel that will really resonate long-term with the customer. Now, um, as a new brand, uh, Obviously, we have a lot of people in this room right now who are have just launched or have just been the past year. Um, what advice would you give to them as someone who is in the process of going through it right now in terms of just uh, this upstart process? Absolutely, and, and the brand has seen an unbelievable amount of attention. Uh, even though we're launching this week, uh, I think the feedback from the consumers and retailers alike has been tremendous. So I think staying very strategic and focused is the best advice I could provide, given that there's so many different angles you could bring the product and you could bring it to every retailer in America, but really staying strategic and focused on building a brand that customers are gonna uh, align with long-term is, is the most important advice I can give, uh, give anyone out there starting a new brand. And as a part of Halen Brands, obviously you have a lot of data and insights just from your other snack categories. So, I mean, what was the, how important was that to you and what information were you able to take from those other brands and, and apply to this one? What was the most resonant for you? Absolutely. I think there were, there were two things, right? The first was understanding those cauliflower trends just based on what we were seeing in some of our other snacking categories. Uh, I think the second piece was understanding what the, the mom and the dad wanted for themselves and for their kid. Uh, and with all that data we had internally, we were able to, to look at that and say, okay, here are the most important trend lines that are going to be going on over the next two to three years. How can we implement a product that stays within those trend lines that's really going to resonate? Sure. Let's talk packaging design for yeah. a second. So um, I think especially with... Uh, products that use vegetables as one of their main ingredients when it's in terms of kids. 
Uh, there are two plays that we see people do in terms of design. You either go really heavy on the yeah. vegetables and fruits, or you uh, you put them in text, but in the design itself, you kind of stay clear of that. We wanted this playfulness and this happy mood and feeling in our branding so that moms and dads and also kids would have that positive reaction to it. And with all the focus groups and everything else that we've done leading up to this launch, we feel very confident that we have branding that's really going to resonate with, with our customer. Now, um, last week or the week before, I feel like all my weeks are starting to melt into each <laughs> other, but um, Pepsi bought yes. their snacks. Yeah. What do you think that deal signifies for everyone in the vegetable-based snack industry? Look, I think there. I, I think the the strategics who are out there are looking at the market and saying, you know, the the customer is really starting to transition to wanting better for you, right? Doritos still has great market share, but at the end of the day, the next generation customer wants the better for you products, and co uh, companies like Frito Lay, companies like Mondelez are not offering those type of products. So by buying a company like Bear Snacks, they're able to find that kind of innovation uh, in, in and go after customers they're not currently targeting. What that does for companies like ourselves and others of the market is really, you know, start to provide a a, a background for why we're doing this and a background for the opportunity that we see when we look at from the ground up and where we can go with the brand. It's not just a cracker and pretzel company, right? It's uh, all the different snacking options that have been around for many, many years for consumers. And how can we innovate to be that next generation product for those customers eating snacks in all these different categories? So talking about that innovation and the idea of building a platform under this brand, um, what are your char main characteristics or core characteristics that you will carry with you across all of the product lines in the future? Sure, so I think non-GMO is essential when you're talking about a better for you product. Uh, I think plant-based is essential as well right now. That's where we're seeing all the trends go. Uh, everything in our line is going to be gluten-free, uh, and everything in our, our line is going to have a good source of your vitamins and nutrients, right? By using the vegetables that we're using, you're getting a ton of nutritional value uh, in all of our products, and that's going to remain consistent across the board. And I think most importantly, taste, taste and flavor, right? You're going to have that, if whether you're doing a pretzel, a cracker, or a chip, or something else, you're going to have that same recognizable format, that same great taste that a consumer is going to want every time they pick up a bag. But are we staying center store, you think, with this? Uh, we are staying snack and cracker. Okay. Yes, very absolutely. Cool. We're staying very, as I said before, when you asked what, what is my best advice for entrepreneurs, stay strategic and stay focused and keep your business plan tight. Awesome. So let's um, uh, switch uh, gears for a second. You had a frozen food company prior to this, yes. um, Bold Organics. Uh, we have had a ton of people not only just on the main stage, but also on the live stream lounge speaking to the frozen category. Um, what are your thoughts on some of just the recent hype around frozen food and whether millennials are super into it or not super into it? Look, it's, it's, uh, it's a great question. It's, it's tough to me pr to provide too much insight given I've been out of the business for, for a couple of years. Uh, I will say that the brands that are having success in frozen food are hitting the same trends that we are going after with our company, right? So the, the brands like Cauliflower uh, Pizza Crust, right? Yeah. It's a tremendous product, tremendous pizza crust. They've had a ton of success in getting customers buying that product because it's a great product, right? So at the end of the day, when you have great products that have great branding that resonate with the consumers for all the characteristics we just discussed. Yeah. You're going to have long-term success, whether you're in the frozen category or in the salty snack category. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for chatting thank with you. us today. I yeah. really appreciate it, and I have been uh, snacking on the <laughs> cheese it crackers in the office for the weeks leading up to this. So thank you for keeping me fed. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>